So ever since I installed the sound system on the Can-Am, you guys have been asking me to do a subwoofer. Well, today it gets a subwoofer under the rear seat. What's going on guys? So before we get started with the video, I do have to mention a product as it helps me grow my channel and bring content to you guys. Kemimoto sent me this awesome flag holder and they asked me to do an install and a review with it and it is actually pretty nice. So in the box you get everything that you need to install including the Allen wrenches, all the hardware and the whole thing is fully aluminum, stainless steel hardware and the finish on it is actually super nice. So I was kind of impressed with that. So they actually include a couple of different adapters to be able to fit an inch and three quarter to two inch roll bar or tubing and the mount itself is fully adjustable like 360 degrees so you can turn it whichever way you need to in order to be able to mount it the right way and the installation is super simple all you do is install the spacers that you need for the tubing clamp it on install the stainless steel hardware and i would recommend using some blue loctite on here just so the screws don't back out over time from vibrations and use the included allen wrench to get everything nice and tight The next step is to install the 90 degree adjustable swivel head that you mount the flagpole on. And once again, I would recommend using the blue Loctite on here as well. And finally, we install the flagpole on here, also using Loctite. And finally, we're installing the flag. Now you can run any flag you want, whether it's the included American flag or if you want to run your own custom flag or a business name or something like that. I think this would work absolutely great. So in my opinion, what do I think? I think this thing is actually solid. And believe me, I tried. I really like the way it mounts up. I really like the way it looks. You can mount it on anything you want, including your Jeep, which I think I'm gonna get one for my Jeep as well. So if you want to get yours, the link is in the description. Check them out at Kemimoto and use KMYTBA for a coupon code. It'll save you 12% site-wide. And I got to say, Kemimoto really knocked it out of the park with this one. Get two of them. Mount them on the front. Pretend you have a presidential Can-Am. I'm Mohawk Dave, and I approve this message. Now back to our video. I am going to be running a thousand max power uh, Soundstream amp and the reason why I'm doing that is because I already have a Soundstream amplifier in the Can-Am uh, for four speakers that I'm running. It's a four channel amp and honestly uh, even being skeptical about Soundstream it has been performing perfectly. Um, sounds great. It's giving me adjustability. I have washed it i have gotten it wet and it's still working perfectly fine knock on wood the enclosure i went to utv stereo and basically it's a very simple box it's supposed to be able to fit underneath the rear uh driver's side seat which that's exactly what i wanted i don't want a subwoofer under my ass having it in the back i feel like it's going to be a better option and it's able to fit this cw rt10 which is kickers comp rt it is actually a dual voice coil so this one is this one is a two ohm sub and basically it's gonna fit right into this enclosure and it actually fits super nicely so we'll see if it fits underneath the seat so first thing is first i'm gonna have to take out both rear seats most of you know how to take the seats out so with youtube magic we're just gonna make them disappear and just like that the seats are out <laughs> so now i have to figure out the location of where i'm gonna mount this amplifier and i wish i could kind of do one on top of each other but in reality i have these bolts here i don't want to go any lower um but I think what I'm gonna do is go a little bit higher and offset it like this just because for the reason when the seats also in I'm gonna be able to reach behind the seat and make any adjustments if I need to 
So I think this location is going to be perfect right here. So I, I loosened this one up so I can plug it in, but this way both of the amps will actually have more airflow going through them too to cool them, so that's kind of a good thing. The next step is to just loosen up the brake line off of the seat bar and move it off a little bit to the side so we could fit the subwoofer box in there. In the installation instructions, it also says to loosen up the T-splitter on the brake line that mounts inside the center console, but I was able to slip the subwoofer box in there without doing that. So after everything fit perfectly and I did my test fit, I did have to drill a hole in the subwoofer box to run my speaker wire through it. And I did seal it off with just regular silicone so water's not getting in there or I'm not losing any air. Now, get this thing into place. So after I had everything nicely centered, I did have to drill four holes right through the holes in the box into the bottom of the Can-Am and I had to install the hardware from the bottom and put the nut on top after applying a generous amount of silicone onto the actual bolt. So again, I'm not getting any water intrusion into the box or losing any air. So as I mentioned, the subwoofer is a dual voice coil 2 ohm sub. That means I'm gonna be wiring it into a four ohm load to the amplifier, which is gonna be giving me about 350 watts of power to the subwoofer, which falls into the spectrum of what Kicker is actually recommending for the subwoofer. Now, I also did try both ways, packing the box with polyfill and without it, and I think since that enclosure is so small that polyfill really soaks up the rest of the air inside the box. So, I, in my opinion, it really does sound a little better without out the polyfill in there. Also, before installing the subwoofer, I did put a bead of silicone on there. And again, that's just to try to keep it dry inside and make sure that it's got a really good seal. One little disappointment that I ran into is this guy right here um, connecting from one amp to another uh, it just seems like it's not putting out enough of a signal to this amplifier um, causing the sub to be barely responsive even with the gain turned all the way up and the remote uh, turned all the way up it's still for some reason not putting out enough to drive that sub when I'm using this. So besides the piggyback wire that goes from one amp to the other, I ordered RCA splitters through Amazon to be delivered next day, which solved the problem. It was simple enough. And now all I gotta do is put it all back together and see what it really sounds like with everything hooked up the way it should be. So I got everything buttoned up and seriously the weather does not like me whatsoever we're supposed to be heading out today at two o'clock in the morning to the dunes uh, loading it up on the trailer and i don't think i think that's gonna kind of suck all right seats back in subwoofer is nicely tucked in i have plenty of room there and even with the seat all the way up to the front, seat's still fully adjustable. And like I was mentioning before, I still have full adjustability to the amp right here. I can still reach it perfectly fine. And including the other amp, both are kind of in a really good spot. I kind of like the way this this whole thing is. It's out of the way, it's, it's tucked up neatly. And actually, so I got my kid's seat here, but so the seat will actually move back all the way, just like that one. Um, the amps don't get in the way. All right, so let's see what it sounds like now. My 67 designs mount. The mag mount actually works awesome in the Can-Am. And I got my other mount right here holding up the GoPro. So if you guys are looking to mount up any of your gear, tablets, or navigation, anything in the Can-Am, uh, make sure to check out 67d.com mohawk dave and uh, get yourself some awesome mounts 
obviously the GoPro is not going to be able to pick up what it really sounds like in here but if you are looking for teeth shattering bass uh, this is not the setup for you this is like legitimately adds nice deep you know depth to music you got to keep in mind the enclosure is very small right and then the third part is you are in an open cockpit so you're gonna lose some of that sound you're gonna lose some of that enclosed space the pressure that you know gets created you'll see the difference hopefully the GoPro is gonna be able to pick it up and you'll be able to see what it sounds with the sub and without the sub <laughs> Did turn the sub down and you'll see you'll see what the difference is So overall, I gotta say, it is a huge, huge improvement over just running four speakers versus four speakers and a subwoofer. And like I said, it's not the Thunder Bass that is gonna rattle everything, but it really does add more clarity and depth to the music, which I really wanted. And again, you're working with open space, basically no pressure is being built in the cab. Now, if this was a completely enclosed cab like a car, I'm sure the subwoofer would be a lot louder and utv stereo does offer these enclosures for the passenger side rear and for the front seats as well so really you could add two subs you could add four if you really want to the sky is the limit but i am very happy with the setup and i think i am pretty much done with the sound system in the can-am i will also put a link in the description for the installation that i did on the head unit with the front speakers and also the video that I did, the tower speakers in the back of the can -Am. And as always, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Also, I will put all the links to all the products that I used in this video in the description. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Later.